Psalm Matthew nine. chapter 7, verse 7 through 11. And let's read it if we can. Ask, and it will be given unto you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. Verse 8. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. Or what man is there among you who, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? Matayo Saba, Stari wa Saba, Hadwa Kumina Moja, Neno Linasema. Mbeni nanyi mtapewa tafteni nanyi mtaona bisheni nanyi mtafunguliwa kwa maana kila ambaye hupokea naye atafutae huona naye abishaye atafunguliwa au kuna mtu yupi kwenu ambaye mwanawe akimuomba mkate atampa jiwe au akiomba samaki atampa nyoka basi ikiwa ninyi mlio wa ovu mnajua kuwapa watoto wenu vipawa vyema je Si zaidi sana baba yenu aliye mbinguni atawapa mema wao wa mumbao. Hallelujah. As the scriptures have just stated, kama vile maandiko yamesema, let's seek and we will find. Wacha tutafute na tutaona. Let's knock and it shall be opened to us. Wacha tubishe nasi tutafunguliwa. For everyone who asks receives. And the one who seeks finds. And the one who knocks, it will be opened. I want you to notice those words. That everyone who does these things, it shall be done to them. But is it true that everyone who does this, it is done unto them. I tend to believe not everyone. But those who diligently seek, knock. Hallelujah. Knock, seek, and they don't relent and they are knocking, and they are seeking, those are the people that the Lord can never deny. The words seek and knock indicates persistence. It's not only ordinary persistence, but persistence in prayer. Na si kufuatilia kwa kawaida tu, lakini ni kufuatilia kwa maombi. Prayer while you are seeking and pursuing what you need for his glory, not for your own pride. Na ni kuomba au kufuatilia kwa ajili ya utukufu wake, wala si kwa majivuno yako. If it is for his glory, kama ni kwa utukufu wake, then we can keep on seeking and we shall find. Then we can keep on knocking and it shall be opened. God is not in the business of massaging a person's ego. He is doing things for his glory. And he is talking to us this morning that this kind of persistence reveals a deep desire and a great hunger for something. When this kind of persistence is realized, it reveals before God a desire and a great hunger for something that is required. The problem is Shida. we knock once on the door of healing and when it doesn't take place, we give up. 
Tunabisha mara moja katika mlango wa uponyaji na usipopokea unakata tamaa. We knock once on the door of deliverance and when it doesn't happen we give up. Unabisha mara moja katika mlango wa ukombozi na usipokombolewa unakata tamaa. We seek God guidance in an area of anything and when we don't get an answer quickly we give up. Na tuna Omba Mungu katika jambo lolote na lisipojibiwa tunakata tamaa and therefore we end up becoming a people who have created a microwave type of god nasi tunaishia kuwa watu ambao tumeomba Mungu kama mtu wa kutenda tu a god who you press a button and voila boom everything you needed in seconds Mungu ambaye ni umuamrishe ka kitu na anafanya hivyo mara hiyo hiyo. God does not work that way. Mungu hafanyi kazi namna hiyo. If it is not for his glory you will wait for a long period of time. Kama si kwa ajili ya utukufu wake utasubiri kwa muda. I want to minister to us on a message entitled hunger for more. Takanyoleete ujumbe wa unaosema kuwa na njaa ya mengi zaidi. Don't stop at where you are at. Usi Kome mahali uko. Don't be comfortable with where you are at. Usitosheke na mahali uko. Develop a hunger for more. Wewe kuwa na njaa ya Because mambo zaidi. Because our God is a God of abundance. Kwa maana Mungu ni Mungu wa utele. God is a God of abundance. Mungu ni Mungu wa utele. Yesterday I was sharing with my cell members. Jana alikuwa akishiriki na viong watu wa ushirika wake and i was telling them the word that god has given me or gave me yesterday is that god is still performing miracles na jana alikuwa na shiriki nao kuhusu mungu bado anatenda miujiza and i asked myself na akajiuliza how hungry have we been to see god do things we don't understand Tumekuwa na njaa kiasi gani ya kutaka kuona Mungu akitenda mambo hatufahamu. You see things that only God can do. Things that only God can perform. You see those are what we call miracles when it's beyond human capability and it's only God that's a miracle. Mujiza ni kile kinachotendwa na Mungu peke yake na ni zaidi ya ufahamu na uwezo wa mwanadamu. When it's beyond your doctor, when it's beyond your physician, when it's beyond your you, you, you fleshly prophet, then it's only God who can do it and let me tell you when he does it it's a pure miracle. Na mujiza ni kile ambacho daktari wala tabibu wako hawezi kukifanya. And for that to happen Church of the Living God, a true hunger, a true hunger that aligns with the glory and the will of God must develop if we are to see this kind of miracles, signs and wonders. Na hiyo muujiza ifanyike ni lazima tukajiweke katika laini ya matakwa ya Mungu. But we all have a problem. Lakini sote tuko na shida. We desire so desperately for a job and financial breakthrough. Na tunatamani sana kwa tunatamani kazi na fedha and when we are broke we pray and we even cry and our tears can even wash the sanctuary because they are in plenty lakini tukiwa tuna pesa tunaweza kuomba tukilia na machozi ijae but the moment we get what we needed prayer takes a backstage and we now say it's time to praise we don't long, we no longer pray lakini ukipokea maombi inarudi nyuma. This is the problem with the church. Na hii ndio shida kubwa ya kanisa. We are wanting people. Sisi ni watu wa mahitaji. We borrow and borrow. We are spiritual beggars. Sisi tunaomba ni watu wa kuomba kiroho kila when wakati. We get you don't see us when we lack you see us. We are spiritual beggars. Tunapopokea hutuoni, tunapokuwa na mahitaji unatupata tukiomba. God wants you to keep the desire burning, the hunger burning. If you receive tell God more is required for your glory and I'm not living here until I receive it. Ukipokea ni lazima uendelee kuomba Mungu akupatie zaidi na hautoki hapo mpaka upokee you don't become comfortable with one soul you don't become comfortable with one mission field you don't become comfortable with one mission center you want more for the glory of god must be seen through us hawezi kutosheka na kuhubiri mahali pamoja ama mara mbili 
when abundance utele ukitokezea comes calling folk to the hunger to seek and to know God more weka mtazamo wako kwa njaa na kiu ya kutafuta Mungu zaidi when any circumstance of life be it good or bad comes calling don't lose focus on God hali yoyote ikitokezea maishani iwe ni mbaya ama nzuri usitoe mtazamo wako kwa Mungu he is the only one who knows you and everything else that comes your way he knows it he is the god who has the best interest or your best interest at heart yeye ni Mungu anayekufahamu vizuri na anafahamu yote naye anakuwazia mema the circumstances write this down the circumstances that you will and are facing as a, are a setup and how you act around them will determine your next yale mahitaji yanayokuzingira na utakayo kutana nayo ni mtego na vile utajishughulisha nayo itachangia vile mambo itakuwa i know we see setups as a wrong thing najua tunaona mitego kama mibaya how about us changing and playing with those words and saying we are being set up <laughs> hello je tu atazame hayo maneno kama tunaowekwa <laughs> juu tunasukumwa mbele we see it as a as a trap but how can, why can't we just just use those words the way they are we are being set up somewhere a little bit higher e hey, tutumie yale maneno vile yako tunawekwa juu kiwango cha juu we are being set up tunawekwa juu and the only thing we can do when we've been set up is to give up all our problems give them up unto him na tukiwekwa juu inatupasa tukaweze kuachilia mahitaji yote i'm just playing with these words because they make sense to me if i give up to him not give up and leave but i'm giving them up to him i'm not letting go i'm holding on and giving him all my burdens for he cares for me na ikiwa siku kata tamaa lakini ni kumkabidhi yeye akiwa juu listen to philippians 3:10 wa filipi 3:10 that i may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being formed to his death being conformed to his death ili nimjue yeye na uweza wa kufufuka kwake na ushirika wa mateso yake nikifananishwa na kufa kwake to know Christ better and to be more like him this must be the great aim of every believer kumfahamu kristo vyema hii inakupasa liwe lengo kuu la kila mkristo look at verse 10 Alia mstari wa 10 Paul is saying that i may know him Paulo anasema ili nimfahamu zaidi Paul wants to know Christ better the best he can he wants to know him more and more Paulo anataka kumjua Kristo zaidi na zaidi He is speaking about a knowledge resulting from personal experience Yeye huzungumzia kutokana na tajriba yake and not mere head knowledge Na si kutokana na ufahamu tu wa akili Until the church reaches where Paul was na mpaka kanisa lifikie mahali Paulo alikuwa and the church comes to the realization that head knowledge cannot transform the heart na kanisa lifahamu ya kwamba ufahamu wa kiakili haiwezi kubadilisha moyo the heart that makes the head or the mind and the knowledge make sense ya kwamba ni moyo unaoweza kubadilisha mawazo ya kiakili when the church realizes this it will not stop seeking na kanisa likigundua hii halitakoma kutafuta hello amen it is a personal experience hii ni uvumbuzi wa kibinafsi not mere head knowledge na si kutokana na ufahamu wa akili that you acquire through reading and hearing from others bayo unaipata kutokana na kusoma na kusikia i'll never forget the first time i preached the first time i was not a preacher i was just a new believer born again having enjoy to i mean enjoying life hata sahau siku ya ya kwanza ya kuhubiri hakuwa mchungaji wakati huo i was just a christian excited for god yeye alikuwa ni mkristo aliyesisimuka kwa ajili ya mungu i had a sermon from a preacher by the name of john hege alisikia ujumbe kutokana na mhubiri john hege and it slapped me awake papa and i was like wow you mean this is what the bible says naye ikamwamsha kutoka usingizi and i took notes na kaandika trust me i preached that sermon for almost 2 years 
Alihubiri huo ujumbe kwa takriban miaka miwili. I'm invited for for a matanga, that's the message. I'm invited for a birthday party, that's the message. I'm, wherever I'm invited, that's what I preach. Someone else message. Na alikuwa akihubiri huo ujumbe wa mtu mwingine wa huyo mhubiri. And one day the Holy Spirit asked me, when are you going to hear from me and speak from what I'm saying? Na siku moja Roho Mtakatifu akamuuliza utaenda kusikia lini kutoka kwangu. And I was like, I thought this is an exciting message. It excites me. So it's not about what excites you. It's all about what I want to tell the people. Si muhimu si kile kinachokusisimua, muhimu ni kile nataka kuambia watu. And God right there was telling me, go deeper with me. You are too shallow for my glory. Na wakati huo Mungu alikuwa anamwambia endelea kuzama ndani mwangu kwa maana haujazama. Listen to me. Sikilize. I decided I will be reading books, I will be praying and one day I'm reading this book and this is how the writer began. Na siku moja alipokuwa anasoma kitabu kikawa kinaanza hivi. If you're reading this book to get a revelation please stop because I got it from the Holy Spirit go seek him. <laughs> Kwamba ukiwa unasoma hichi kitabu ili upate ufunuo wachana nacho kwa maana mimi ufunuo niliutoa kwa Roho Mtakatifu. And I was like how is this guy going to sell this book if this is how he begins? <laughs> Na akawa anajiuliza hichi kitabu kitanunuliwa vipi? And I remembered I've already bought it so he's already made his money. <laughs> Na akakumbuka tayari alikuwa amekinunua. But that book taught me to seek God. Lakini hicho kitabu kilimfundisha kutafuta Mungu. And today I can speak to you. Na leo anaweza kutuzungumzia. And let you know this. Na akaweze kutufahamisha. When you seek God with all your heart. Ukimtafuta Mungu kwa moyo wako wote. You will never be discouraged. Wewe hautavunjika moyo. No situation will ever bring you down. Hakuna hali itakayo kuleta chini. No kind of gossip will ever destroy you. Hakuna hali ya masengenyo ambayo itakuangamiza. No lack will ever pull you down. Hakuna upungufu utakao kuangusha. For you will understand that God will never leave you nor forsake you regardless of circumstances you're going through. Kwa maana utafahamu ya kwamba Mungu hawezi kuachia, kuachilia ama kukutupa haijalishi ni hali gani Theref- unapitia. Therefore hang for more. Kwa hivyo tamani zaidi. Stop running with one car revelation for 2 years. Wacha kushikilia ufunuo kwa miaka miwili. Just one car revelation and you hunger for deeper, going deeper and deeper. Go deeper and deeper. Stop repeating yourself. Uh, tamani kuingia nani na ufahamu zaidi. Wacha kujirudia. Repetitive behavior without his grace is what we call religion. Ile tabia ya kurudia ndia bila neema yake. Neema yake ndio huwa ni dini. You start doing things thinking that's how you please God. No, you please God by seeking him, hearing him, understanding him and obeying what he's telling you. Unampeleza Mungu kwa kumsikiliza na kwa kumtii. Paul might have met him while he was still Saul. Paulo alikutana naye akiwa bado ni Sauli but that was not enough he needed more lakini hiyo haikutosha alihitaji zaidi what if paul would have been going around all the churches he had planted telling them i fell from a donkey and i became blind hallelujah and ananias touched me and the scales came it's time for your scales to fall i say it is time for your scales Je, ingalikuaje kama Paulo alienda akihubiri ule ujumbe wa kwamba alikuwa kipofu na akafunguliwa macho? Probably if Paul was the modern day preacher in Kenya, he would have said, "It's time to fall from your donkey. Tell your neighbor it's time to fall from your donkey." Hallelujah. It's time for the scales to fall. Ananias is coming whether they like you or not. Ananias is coming. Je, ni wakati wa magamba kuanguka kutoka kwa macho, Anania anakuja. Paul never preached his experience physical experience he preached Christ and him crucified he preached Christ's experience yeye paulo alihubiri kristo wala si yale mambo yalikuwa yamemtokea alishikilia zaidi yale kristo aliyoyapitia ila sio yale yeye aliyoyapitia the devil wants you to concentrate with what you are passing through or what you are going through god wants you to concentrate in what the son went through 
If you are anataka wewe ushurikie yale mambo unayopitia lakini Mungu anataka ukaweze kupita kushikilia. Let's go to verse 10 once again Philippians 3:10. He says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Not mine, not my revival, his resurrection and I may share his suffering becoming like him in death, in his death. Ili nimjue yeye na uwezo wa kufufuka kwake na ushirika wa mateso yake. Paul knew something of this power of resurrection more than most men would ever know. Paulo alifahamu nguvu za ufufuo zaidi ya wengine. But understand this, he longed and desire and wanted to experience it more and more. Lakini kumbuka hii alitamani akaweze kushiriki sehemu ya hizo nguvu zaidi na zaidi. He knew it. Alifahamu. But he wanted to experience it more. He is not doing what he is doing to be known. He is doing it to know more of his savior and the power of his resurrection. Anafanya hiyo ili asitambulike lakini akaweze kumfahamu zaidi mokozi wake. Not so that he may boast but rather so that may, he may teach others through understanding and experience in the same. Si kwa kujivune lakini niwafundishe wengine yale mambo yaliyotokea. Let's look at Colossians 1:24 to verse 29. I now rejoice in my sufferings for you. I fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body which is the church of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God which was given to me for you to fulfill the word of God the mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations but now has been revealed to his saints verse 25 to them verse 27 sorry to them god willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of his mystery among the gentiles which is christ in you the hope of glory verse 28 him we preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ to this end i also labor striving according to his working which works in me mightly nami najitabisha kwa neno lilo hilo nikijitahidi kwa kadiri ya kutenda kazi kwake atendaye kazi ndani yangu kwa nguvu paul is a man on a mission yeye alko na lengo paulo he's, a, he's on a mission Paulo ako na lengo. He wants to teach. Anataka kufundisha. He wants to present someone to be perfect. Anataka afanye watu wakamilike. But he is not forgetting himself in verse 29. Lakini hajisahau yeye mwenyewe. To this end I also labor. He is laboring where he is, striving according to his working which works in the uh, in me mightily. He is looking at what God is working through him and in him. He is not looking at what he is performing and achieving through men. Lakini yeye haangalii kile anachotendea watu kupitia mwanadamu, lakini anaangalia kile Mungu anatenda ndani yake. Failure begins the moment you start seeing your achievement as opposed to seeing how God enabled you to achieve. Kuanguka kunaanza na kuanza kutizama ulioyatenda pasina kuangalia anayokuwezesha kuyatenda. Amen. That is pride. Hiyo ni kiburi. You start complaining throughout because you are not seeing how God has enabled you and how God is working through you. You are seeing how you are being misused. Unaona uh, wauoni kile Mungu amekuwezesha kutenda lakini unaona vile unavyotumiwa vibaya. You just see how you you are the only one who does it. Let me tell you. Before you came others were doing. Kabla wewe uwe wengine walikuwa wanafanya. And God used them. Na Mungu aliwatumia. And those who saw that it is God using them they were blessed. Na wale watu walioona hiyo kama ni fursa ya Mungu walibarikiwa. As a church start seeing and concentrating with what god wants to do and what god is doing focus on jesus and hunger for more from him mtazame kristo na utamani mengi kutoka kwake now paul wanted to share the suffering of christ which continue 
as long as his people are on earth. Paulo alitaka kushiriki mateso ya Kristo yanayoendelea ili mradi bado tuko hapa duniani. Notice that he wants to share the suffering of Christ. Tazama hiyo anataka kushiriki kuteseka kwa Kristo. Can we define a normal Christian here in Kenya? Unaweza kueleza mkristo wa kawaida hapa Kenya? The things I went through under that pastor. Oh my goodness. The things I went through. Yale mambo nilipitia na huyo mchungaji. Wae, wacha tu. The things I went through with that guy. <laughs> I wouldn't even wish to my best enemy. Let me tell you. Christ went through the worst. Kristo <laughs> alipitia mabaya zaidi. And Paul is there saying if Christ went through it, who am I not to go through it? <laughs> Na that's kama Kristo alipitia mimi ni nani nisipitie. He's enjoying everything. Once uh, when they would arrest him and 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 beat him thoroughly he would still say mm, all this marks for Christ. Hallelujah. But let me tell you if you are being beaten because of your foolishness please you have every reason to complain. Kama But if wewe... it is for his glory you have everything to re- uh, to rejoice about kama wewe unateswa na kuchapa kwa sababu ya upumbavu wako wewe lalamika tu lakini kama hiyo inatendeka kwa ajili ya utukufu wa Mungu furahikia paul is rejoicing in christ suffering not his own making not the suffering of his own making yeye paulo anafurahikia kuteswa kwa kristo lakini siku teseka yeye mwenyewe sharing in the power of christ resurrection means to share in his suffering as well Kushiriki katika nguvu za ufufuo inamaanisha kushiriki katika kuteseka pia. Sharing in his sufferings means to share in his comfort and peace here and now. Na kushiriki katika kuumia kwake inamaanisha pia kushiriki katika kutuli, kutulizwa hapa. How many understand that Jesus is not suffering where he is? Ngapi wanafahamu kwamba Yesu haumii mahali yuko? He suffered then for us once and for all. Aliteseka na ikaisha. If I'm going to go through tough times because of his name and what he did, I can go through it but it doesn't mean that I will go through that in in, in tears and 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 complaining and murmuring. I will go through it rejoicing and having fun because where he is there are pleasures forever more. Na nikipitia hayo machungu nitapitia kwa furaha nikijua mahali yuko kuna hazina tele. Matthew 5:6. Tayo 5:6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be filled. Heri wenye njaa na kiu ya haki maana hao watashibishwa. Sio walio na njaa ya pesa. Mhm. They are those who are hungry for money and promotion wale wako na tamaa ya pesa na kuongezwa madaraka money is good we need it because it helps us with missions it helps us with running the affairs of the church but let me tell you it is blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be filled wamebarikiwa wale walio na njaa na kiu ya haki maana watashibishwa there are so many here who are hungry today kuna wengi hapa ambao wako na njaa but the hunger oh my goodness thank god all those desires are hidden if they would be open for us to see oh goodness me lakini tunashukuru mungu kwa maana imefichika would see terrible things tungeona mambo ya ajabu ya kidhihirishwa hapa god is awesome mungu ni mzuri matthew is telling us you need to hunger for more masayo anasema tukue na njaa na kutamani zaidi if you think your righteous hunger for more kama wewe ni mwenye haki tamani if you, zaidi if you think you are saved hunger for more Kama of his wewe presence wewe unafikiria umeokoka tamani zaidi if you know how to read the bible hunger for more kama unafahamu kusoma biblia tamani zaidi if you are a prayerful person hunger for more kama wewe ni mtu wa maombi tamani zaidi and if you are a giver for missions hunger for more kama wewe unatoa kwa missionary zaidi tamani zaidi if you are a giver zaidi. in the house of god hunger even to give some kama wewe unatoa katika nyumba ya Mungu utamani zaidi Jeremiah 29:413 because some of us are complaining and saying pastor you know in this current government things are tough we are being taxed even when you breathe in your tax you breathe out your tax you know <laughs> we talk too much let's look at the desire of god in tough times Jeremiah continue where are we Jeremiah 29 verse 4 to 13 
Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all who are carried away captive, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon. Tari wa ine, inasema, Bwana wa majeshi, mungu wa Israeli, awambia hivi, watu wote walio chukuliwa mateka. Nilio wafanya, wachukuliwe, toka Yerusalemu, mpaka babeli. Mm-hmm. God is talking to people who have no power and who has no freedom. He's giving a message to them in Jeremiah 29. I know we are fond of reading Jeremiah 29, 11, and we quote it, but we don't understand that it was being spoken to a people who are in bondage. Na Yeremia 29, 10 moja ni maneno ambayo alizungumziwa watu walio kuwa katika wamisho. Verse 5. Build houses. He's talking to people who are in captives. Captivity. Build what? Aha, come on. Watu read. Walio katika mateka, wanambiwa jengeni nyumba. Build houses and dwell in them. Plant gardens and eat their fruits. Mm. You who are complaining of taxes, you who are complaining of economic tough times, you are even looking for visas and green cards to run away from your country. Build houses where you are. Jengeni <laughs> nyumba, mkakae ndani yake and dwell in them and plant gardens and eat their fruit. Verse 6. Take wives and beget sons and daughters and take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husband so that they may bear sons and daughters that you may be, incre- you may be increased there and not diminish. Oweni wake mkazai wana na binti kawaozeni wake wana wenu mkawaoze wa ume binti zenu Wazae wana na binti mkaongezeke huko wala msipungue. What is God trying to tell these people? Mungu anajaribu kuambia nini hawa watu? In the position of oppression, Ka- hunger for more, hunger for increment, hunger for being expanded, hunger for more territories. Wakati umefinyiliwa, tamani kufanikiwa zaidi na kuongeza mipaka yako. Don't be greedy, but hunger in the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 7. And seek the peace of the city where I have caused you to be carried away captive. And pray to the Lord for it. For in its peace, you will have peace. Listen, before you can hunger for more, desire to change the atmosphere of where you are. Tamani kubadilisha hali ya hewa mahali uko. Make a heaven where you are. Pafanye mbingu mahali pazuri mahali unaishi. If you go to an American embassy, ukienda katika ubalozi wa Marekani, be Rest assured that you are no longer in Kenya even though that embassy is in Kenya. Wewe unahakikishwa kwamba hauko Kenya hata kama huo ubalozi huko Kenya. If you are chased by the cops or the government wants to make sure you are dealt with properly and you find yourself in the American embassy, the Kenyan policemen have no jurisdiction over that boundary. Kiwa unafukuzwa na uingie katika ubalozi wa Marekani, askari hawezi kukushika. Their jurisdiction ends where the beacon of the American embassy begins. <laughs> na utawala wao unaishia mahali ubalozi unanza. Now if you are going and the nation you are in is going through tough times, create a jurisdiction that is heavenly. Create an atmosphere of heaven because heaven at this point in time is an atmosphere. Hell is also an atmosphere. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Wakati unapitia magumu na mabaya, jaribu kutengeneza mahali uko iwe kama mbingu. That's why Christ taught us how to pray and he said, our father who is that in heaven Hallowed be thy, thy kingdom. Niposa yesu akatufundisha, baba yetu lipuni, jina lako litukuze, na ufalme wako uche. Why is the kingdom coming? Because members of that kingdom are where you are. You ask for that kingdom to come. Don't desire to run away and go to where he is. He wants you to bring the kingdom here. An embassy, and you are an ambassador. Usitamani kwenda kwa ufalme, tamani kuleta ufalme hapa. I'm looking at a church that is taking that kingdom to the unreached people groups. 
Naangalia kanisa ambalo litachukua huo ufaulme kuupeleka kwa wale watu wa wana habari njema. At a people who will take this kingdom to that place where people smoke bangi and drink alcohol. I'm looking at a people who will bring that kingdom where peace has never been known because you are an ambassador of Christ. Naangalia watu ambao watachukua huo ufaulme na wapeleke mahali ambapo haujajulikana wenye dhambi. I say it quickly I want to wind up for thus says the Lord of hosts the God of Israel do not let your prophets and your diviners who are in your midst deceive you nor listen to your dreams which you cause to be dreamed verse 9 for they prophesy falsely to you in my name I have not sent them says the Lord what is God trying to tell us Mungu anajaribu kutuambia nini those people who are telling you what you want to hear have not received it from me na wale watu wanataka kuambia kile wanataka kusikia hawajapokea kutoka kwangu. Those who will know what I'm about to say are people who are hungry for more from me. Wale ambao watajua kile cha kusema ni wale watu wako na kiu na njaa yangu. I don't know whether you understand what God is telling these people. Sijui kama unafahamu chenye Mungu anajaribu kuambia hawa watu. The prophets exist, the preachers exist. But he is talking to a commoner. I want to deal with you. I don't want to deal with the prophet. I don't want to deal with the preacher. I don't want to deal with anybody who has a title. I need you. If you humble yourself, I will lift you up. Tell your neighbor hunger for more. Verse 10 quickly. For thus says the Lord. After 70 years are, are complete at Babylon I will visit you and perform my good word towards you and cause you to return to this place Maana Bwana anasema hivi Babeli utakapotimiziwa miaka 70 nitawajilia ninyi na kulitimiza neno langu jema kwenu kwa kuwarudisha mahali hapa How many if God speaks to you you are suffering you are in bondage would still say that is God speaking Wangapi wakati uko hali ya kufinyiliwa unasikia Mungu akisema hayo maneno utasema ni Mungu. You are currently 30 years or 25 and he's saying after 70 years I will show up. You will be at 95. Will you have teeth to enjoy what is bringing? Na sasa uko na miaka 25 na Mungu anakuambia baada ya miaka 70 utakuwa na miaka 95. How many would say that is the God I want to serve? Ni wangapi watasema huyo ndio Mungu ninayemtumikia? But let me tell you if he's coming after 70, 70 years be rest assured he will renew your youth like the ego he is a promise keeping god lakini kuwa na hakikisho ya kwamba yeye ataenda kuuisha nguvu zako kama tai verse 11 quickly for i know the thoughts says the lord thoughts of peace are not of evil to give you a future and a hope maana anayejua mawazo ninayowazia ninyi asema bwana ni mawazo ya amani wala si ya mabaya kuwapa ninyi tumaini siku zenu za mwisho in other words god is saying stop depending on your thoughts i have better thoughts i can do better things for you wacha kutegemea mawazo yako ninakuwazia mema zaidi i have good plans for you niko na mipango mizuri stop running away from what you think it's a it's a it's a container that you are not able to move the way you want stay there jikunje hapo he has good plans for you ndio mm, 12 quickly then you will call upon me when you have obeyed when you have humbled yourself to delay then you will call me and go and pray to me and i will listen to you verse 13 and you will and find me when you search for me with all your heart nanyi mtanita mtakwenda na kuniomba nami nitawasikiliza nanyi mtanitafuta na kuniona mtakapo nitafuta kwa moyo wenu wote when you search him when are you searching him when you feel like where you are you cannot move when you feel when you are obeying this pastor who is not as educated as you are when you are submitting to this cell leader who doesn't look like he can buy a new shoe anytime soon when you are submitting to this good for nothing fellow yet he is an authority then you can seek him and you will find him wakati unajinenekea chini ya mamlaka ambayo Mungu amekuweka chini yako then you can speak to him and he will hear na ndiposa unaweza kumnena na kumuomba kitu naye atasikia. But when you can't value what God has given you, 
My friend, stop seeking and wait for your time to go to hell. Stop seeking. You won't find him until you learn to submit. Na kama haujajifundisha namna ya kunyenyekea, sahau kupokea. God is on a mission just like Paul was on a mission. Mungu yuko na lengo kama vile Paulo alikuwa na lengo. And his children must develop a hunger for what he's doing. Na wanawe ni lazima wakuwe na hiyo njaa. If they are to possess and leave a legacy where they are. Ikiwa ni wapoke na waache turathi au urathi mahali wako. Here are three points that I want you to, to get as you go home. Mambo matatu unatako ya shikilie unapo enda nyumbani. Number one. Ya kwanza. According to Jeremiah 29. Kulingana na Yeremia 29 it is God who had caused them to be taken captive. Ni Mungu aliyewasababisha waende katika uhamisho. They were taken captive with his knowledge. Walipelekwa uhamishoni akiwa Mungu anafahamu. And I want to encourage you this. Nataka nikutie moyo kwa hili. It is God who is allowing you to go through what you are going through. Ni Mungu anaruhusu wewe upitie chenye unapitia. And until you learn what he wants you to learn from what you are going through, you are not ready for what he's about to show you. Na mpaka ujifundishe kutokana na kile anataka ujifundishe. Number 2. Ya pili. He had a good plan for everything he was doing to the children of Israel. Alikuwa na mpango mzuri kwa kila kitu alikuwa nafanya kwa wana wa Israeli. And I want to tell you this. Nataka ni kuambie hili. In your circumstance. Katika hali hiyo yako. God intends good for you. Mungu anakutakia mema. I don't know what circumstances you are in. Sijui uko katika hali gani. His plans are good for you. Mipango yake ni mizuri kwako. They are not of evil. Come on, can I hear better? Amen. Amen. God intends good out of every situation you are in. Don't give up. Mungu wanakutakia mazuri katika kila hali uko na yu sikate tumao. Hang on, hang on and hunger for more. Shikilia hapo hapo na utamani zaidi. Hang on and hunger for more. Shikilia hapo hapo na utamani zaidi. Don't let go. Number three, he had the interest of the city at heart. The inhabitants and the leaders of that city had taken the children of God captive, but God wanted to show them mercy, and therefore he wanted those in captivity to turn the atmosphere into an atmosphere of mercy, and the inhabitants of this city in return would be blessed. Hata Mungu alipenda wale walioishi katika ule mji walikuwa wameoshika mateka. Let me tell you. Wacha nikwambie. My baby sister. Dadake mdogo was diagnosed with cerebral abscess in 2020. Yeye alipatikana na ule ugonjwa wa wa ubongo wa kuanguka. Sio kuanguka ni kama kuna usaa ulijiweka katika ubongo. Mm. Cerebral abscess. But she's a lady who loves God. Lakini yeye ni dada ambaya napenda mungu. A woman of faith. Mwana mke wa imani. She's consistently in prayer. Yeye alikuwa maombini. And when your brain is pressed. Na ubongo wako kiwa umefinyiliwa ama ukona pressure. There's a likelihood you will behave like a madman. Na kuna uwezekano wa kwamba utakuwa kama mwenda wazimu. And this was not any different with my sister. Na hii haikuwa tofauti nae. She snapped. Yeye alipoteza akili. But the snapping was beautiful. Lakini katika haile hali ya kupoteza akili kidogo. Likuwa vizuri. She started screaming and asking people, do you know Jesus? Alianza kupigia nuru na kuliza watu na mfahamu Yesu. She kept on preaching in her madness. Na katika huo wenda wazimu alikuwa na hudiri. She was taken to a hospital. Akapele kwa hospitali. And the first nurse to touch her, she asked, Do you know that you are touching an anointed woman of God? Na yule nurse alipo mgusa kamuliza unajua kwa mbo na gusa mti wa mafuta wa mungu. This is a true story. Na hiyo ni hadithi ya kweli. This is my baby sister. Do you know that you are touching an anointed woman of God? Are you born again? 
This is a holy temple you are touching. Are you born again? They sedated her. She slept. When the results came out, they said, hey, this is cerebral abscess. Quick, transfer to Kenyatta National Hospital. And when she was willed to the hospital, the script continued. I was there. She would come from her slumber and say, Are you born again? <laughs> Do you know that this is a woman of God talking to you? Do you know Jesus? Is somebody listening to me? Mm. Let me tell you. We would visit her in the ward anytime we wanted because the nurses were saying, Oh, these are visitors for these, these are the visitors for the pastors. I mean, they are coming to visit the pastor. She's not even a pastor. She had preached to every nurse who had touched her. Throughout. And let me tell you, mm -hmm. she was in a situation for the glory of God. She would preach to the sick people. Throughout, telling them Jesus loves you. And she's in pain. She underwent through an operation that lasted nine good hours. And when she came out, the doctors and the nurses were shocked. She recovered within a few minutes. She was like, hmm. They expected her to sleep for another 24 hours. But she woke up. She was okay, smiling, a bit drowsy, but telling people, Jesus is Lord. And they were like, this is amazing. Na, na hiyo operesheni ilichukua masaa tisa na ye baada ya hiyo aliamka kuharaka akawashangaza so, madaktari. Don't leave this just saying since they are past all mdogo ni mangomi. She, she's not mad. She's, she's normal. She's okay. She was in that situation for a reason and a purpose. Na hakuwa na wazimu lakini ilikuwa katika hiyo hali kwa lengo. I'm sharing with you to tell you this. You are where you are for a reason and a purpose. Don't desire to get out of that situation until the glory of God is seen through you. Usitamani kutoka katika hiyo hali mpaka utukufu wa Mungu udhihirike kutoka kwako. If you are enjoying well, tell God before this wealth can diminish, I want your glory to be seen. I'm not living here until you're glorified. Mwambie Mungu hii pesa isinitoke ni mpaka utukuzwe. If you are lacking and you are serving God and you don't know, you know you have you, you, you have a lot of month at the end of your money all the time. You don't have enough. If you're lacking, tell God, I will stay in this situation until your glory is revealed. I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to mama. My situation is for your glory. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, hunger for more in your circumstances. Hunger for more. For their lies, your breakthrough. Tamani zaidi kwa mana hapo ndiyo utapata upenyo wako. I want to finish by saying this. Taka ni tamatishe ni kisema hivi. God can still be found. Mungu anaweza anabado anapatikana. But regardless of the circumstances. Haijalishi ile hali. God can still be known. Mungu anaweza kufahamika. Regardless of any, the, the situation you are in. Haijalishi huo katika hali gani. God can still hear you. Mungu bado anakusikia regardless of your circumstances. Haijalishi huko katika hali gani. And God will still answer and is still answering regardless of the circumstances. Na Mungu bado anajibu na atajibu na haijalishi huko katika hali gani. But only to those who persistently seek and knock. Lakini kwa wale tu wanao endelea kutafuta na kubisha. And those who do not stop asking from the Lord. Na wale ambao hawakomi kumomba Mungu. Stand up on your feet. Mameni kwa miguyenu. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. Amen. And be gracious to you. Amen. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. Amen. And give you peace. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the, the love, love of, of God, God 
and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore.